Welcome to the Coffee with Karen podcast, a weekly chat show discussing everything from holistic health to current affairs, from a mental, physical, and spiritual perspective. Get your weekly cup of positivity with a sprinkling of woo-woo. And welcome to Coffee with Karen, a cup of positivity with just a sprinkling of woo-woo, although I'm sure you may have noticed more recently we're Maybe it's a little bit more than a sprinkling now or a couple of teaspoons, I think, of woo-woo each week. So most of my guests are, in general, are around the sort of holistic health arena, whether that's mental health, uh, physical health or spiritual. Um, But in general, people tend to cover all three, which is, at the end of the day, what we all need. Um, Having them separately, I don't think helps anybody because we are whole, all of us, all human beings. So they're going to give their perspective from either the mental, uh, physical or the spiritual perspective or a combination of all three. three. So uh, your host, myself, I am, my name is Karen Roberts, I suppose I am a holistic transformation coach. I just help people get back on track, I suppose, whether that's from a business point of view, health point of view, just how they're feeling, really. So my program, Finding Mojo, is just a 10-day challenge if you want to take a look at get in touch. So my guest today, Pixie. Well, I'm going to let her explain a little Mm -hmm. bit more. So Pixie, if you could share with the listeners a little bit about who you are, uh, what you do, and share a little bit of your story, please. Sure. Hi, everyone. And hi, Karen. Thanks for having me. Um, Yes, so I'm Pixie and I um, have, was born in South Africa, um, travelled extensively, met my husband in the Caribbean. Um, We have a business in Mozambique, which is a large uh, restaurant, um, which has has struggled uh, quite a lot over the last uh, two years, uh, but we're still hanging on. Uh, We came over to the UK in 2018. And uh, I am a yoga instructor and wellness coach. Um, And much like you, I try to to help people who have perhaps just forgotten um, that we are whole and we are responsible and we have control and we have power. Um, My husband and I opened up a a health food shop in, um, in the high street which we sadly closed um, during the response to the pandemic. Um, but we're reviving things and, you know, we have, we have plans to, to, to bring it back and to resurrect things. Um, yeah, so I, um, I, my main focus is, is yoga, um, wellness, and just helping people or reminding people, because I think innately we all, we all know deep inside of ourselves that we have a self, a responsible self. But um, I, um, the idea around t- today's chat was the the power of one, and it's it's um, I've borrowed that uh, that title from a book. It's a South African book about a young boy who's bullied at school and who discovers um, through mentors his his own power um, and the, the power that just one little boy who gets bullied at school actually holds within himself and all the good that he can do uh, with that. Um, so the power of one is, is kind of what I wanted to focus on today. Um, And what that is and what I focus on with my clients through yoga, I do crystal healing as well. I'm an intuitive crystal healer, um, is just allowing ourselves to open up to our own self-responsibility. And it's it's kind of a three-step process. It's self-awareness and then it's self-love, self-respect. And then it's self-responsibility. And once we can take responsibility for ourselves, we, we can spread that responsibility. We don't need the government to look after us. We don't need our husbands or our friends to, to be there for us because we can look after ourselves and we can look after those around us. Um, and then through my yoga practice, it's very much about taking time to fill your cup and also my, my crystal healing 
and the coaching, of course. But it's really about, um, I think society has really programmed us to be selfless, less of self. And what I want to do and what I want to, and the, the, the message that I want to spread is that you don't want to be less of yourself. Yourself is beautiful. Yourself is whole. Yourself, even with all your flaws, is absolutely perfect. Um, and when we can recognise that within ourselves, then we don't we don't we don't fall victim to fascism. We don't fall victim to to um, abusers. We don't fall victim to people who. Um, energy vampires you know we have we have a beautiful strength within us um so yeah so that's basically my my work yeah. and do where do you think all this where do you think we lost our way where we uh gave our power away like you said earlier about you know we it, it, it does come from within and we do have the power within but we have been conditioned somehow and i don't mm -hmm. know how long it's been going on where this this thought process that <clears throat> we do have to put or give our power away and put them in give them to over to somebody just because they're in a white coat um and all this we we are we have been taught that we are yeah we're less yes. where has it come from gosh i think i think it's very difficult to say to give a, 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 an exact time. But what I can, I can tell you a little story about when we first arrived in Mozambique and it's Northern Mozambique. It's quite uh, in the middle of nowhere, really it is. And um, I learned a lot, uh, well, my upbringing, my mom's a yoga teacher, so I was very blessed and she's still a, a huge role model for me to, to have um, had an open mind growing up and to have had a very good spiritual um, basis. But I grew up very much conditioned like most people. I had a mainstream, more or less mainstream education. I went to an art school. Um, but... Yes, mainstream education and, and mainstream healthcare taught us to, you know, give our responsibility over to somebody else. So it's up to the teachers to tell us whether we're doing a good job. It's not up to us to tell ourselves and be proud of ourselves. Um, it's up to the doctors to, to um, tell us what's wrong with us when, you know, it, we can often just solve a headache with a glass of water and a stomach ache with not, you know, cha with changing our diet. So an interesting story that happened to me when we went to Mozambique is I spoke to the staff and when you're doing business, it's, it's complicated with people because you have to deal with staff absences and people will be absent and people will be sick. And certainly in northern Mozambique, where we're dealing with malaria and typhoid and all sorts of other things and, and a lot of um, mortality, there's a lot of staff absences. And so it was a very difficult moral kind of uh, thing to, 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 to work out, but we would have to get a doctor's note for these staff absences um, otherwise you know I'm really sorry we can't pay you um, because that we're also a business um, so the staff would say to me but we don't want to go to the hospital they are killing our children we we go to the hospitals and we see our families die you know and I think it, it's a lot of what we understand as charities, you know, um, these wonderful charities that go to these um, far-flung places and build a beautiful hospital and fill it with, you know, Cuban doctors. And um, they think that they're saving the world and at the same time telling these, um, you know, people with a rich history of natural health of herbs and and natural ways of dealing with illness telling them that that's just obsolete you know and I think that happened in the western culture of homeopathy um, as well and I think that happened in about the 70s didn't it when um, suddenly 
we weren't, you know, homeopathy was it was a quack science, and and now we've got this new Rothschilds based um, medicine. So when it happened, I don't know, but I think it's it's still <clears throat> happening all over the world. Yeah, yeah, where everything has been. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I was so I was brought up in Tunbridge Wells, and they still I don't know if it's still there, the homeopathic hospital. So we were very much brought up. I, I suppose I was quite lucky that my mum had, um, although has changed her mind since. But um, uh, yeah, we were brought up with homeopathy. Um, I took homeopathy to Portugal where I had my second child. Uh, I think people used to think uh, my, my next door neighbour, the, the little boy used to come round for his for a, for a bit of a diagnosis. I was he used to call me the witch doctor. <laughs> So he used to come round for his little for his little sugar pills. But yes, it has been <clears throat> um unless I think something that is so obvious to cure, like um uh arnica. I mean, you know that if you didn't give them arnica, the bruising would have stayed forever, and you give them arnica and the bruising, the swelling goes. So it's something that can be you can actually physically see the change. Whereas they still won't have that the same faith that this, the same thing is going on or something else where you can't measure because that what that is what seems to be the issue with a lot of these things and the same with any <clears throat> pharmaceutical drug that they're uh, they're giving people is a lot of it is done on faith even the pharmaceuticals but you know it's the homeopathy is is, is slammed because they can't gauge it. Um, and it is a, a lot more complicated than people think, you know, and, and some of it can be trial and error, getting to the right uh, remedy for that right person. It, it, you know, it's not an exact science. Yeah. Um, and because they're treating the person as a whole, it's more of a holistic treatment. Yes, they, they might not get it exactly right. Um, yeah. first time. I, mean, I guess we can also touch on the placebo effect as well, can't we? Because that has, I mean, that scientists are still, you know, confused about this. And that's where spirituality kind of comes in. It's it's manifestation, isn't it? Um, you know, it's it's not as difficult to understand if you have a, if you're open to spirituality, then the placebo effect makes complete sense we can Actually, your expectation exactly. of it working and yep. well that's one thing i hope more people have had the this <laughs> <laughs> yeah but we have and that is the beauty of this we have within all of us this immense power to heal ourselves and to heal those around us. Um, and unfortunately, so many of us have been broken, have been beaten by our education, by our, uh, our healthcare services. We have the, the responsibility has taken been taken away from us and placed on somebody else. Um, and so we have forgotten about our innate light and our magic and our ability to heal ourselves um, and that's really what I you know what my mission is now in life is to just spread that I try I mean we all have bad days and we all get sick and we all um, we, you know we're, we all have flaws but my purpose in life is kind of to just be an is to be an empty vessel somehow of, of kind of just purity to try and and help people try and spread my light that I am trying to discover and spread it to others um, you know the the story about um, well what's happening now with the, with the government guidelines and and we don't actually have to wear masks as far as I know in in, in stores anymore do we I, I think um, and yet you see so many people still wearing masks and these are healthy people these are not people with you know immune uh, they're not immune compromised they are just healthy people trying to look good for for the for the world you know the virtues virtue signaling and i know people that are doing this i know people who won't go into tesco's or waitrose because they've forgotten their mask and it's like but you don't need your mask anymore 
government says it's okay now. Oh no, but I, I couldn't go in. I couldn't. I couldn't handle the staring of people. You know what people will think of me. Now, if we took just that little bit of energy that we're putting into worrying about what other people think of us, and we just took that same amount of energy and worked on ourselves, gosh, we'd be in a completely different place. And that's what I want to promote to people, you know, to everybody. Just take all of that fear and that worry and all of that anxiety about what you think people think of you. Take all of that and put it into working on yourself, making yourself a better person. You, what you've just mentioned there uh, is, um, I think, massive. It's the fear. So, uh, and what comes with fear? I mean, you know, let let let's let's just look at the body then for the for a moment. The fear is um, cortisol, <laughs> cortisol being released into the bloodstream. This fight flight thing, which obviously we need, or maybe we needed, you know, back when we were being chased by saber toothed tigers. Um, that was only normally released for a very short period of time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in modern days, it's people are living with cortisol in their body for prolonged periods of time. And, and, and as you said, over the last two years, even more so. And even mm -hmm. as we're coming out of it, you've just said people are still having these feelings of anxiety. It's still going to be cortisol. In the body, the, and and that is going to be one of the things, one of the causes of making themselves ill, and then mm. that becomes a self perpetuating. It's like a self fulfilling prophecy. Oh well, we know I was right. Well, no, actually, you weren't. It have just been the fact that those feelings of anxiety, worrying about what other people think, which is, I just find that's. So sad. I mean, I know we all, we all do it to a degree. We all do, do it. I don't know. Yeah, I try and say I don't, but, you know, I do. <laughs> I do um, to a degree, you know, but it's it's interesting, isn't it? We we bring our own children up to not, you know, mm -hmm. if I, I've always said to my girls, if there was one thing I could get you to understand now, not later, because maybe it does come more with age. Well, my you, mom, my mom taught me, um, you know, your teachers aren't always right, and I, I've, I've really learned that over over the last um, two years. Um, you don't have to bow down to authority. Um, you know, I was once sent home for having my hair in little plaits like you have, um, and the school rules were you need to have your your hair in plaits, and so. My, they said to me, well, you can't have that many plaits. And I was like, my hair's in plaits. And so they said, well, you know, you either you either take it out and plait your hair properly or you go home. And so I went home and I told my mom, and she was really proud of me, you know, because we don't have to just do as we're told. We can. We are autonomous, you know. We are beautiful, autonomous. So we've been brought up like that, haven't you? Well, I, I was the opposite. So I was brought up in a very very uh, uh, white middle-class town, Tummy Dwells, and um, mm -hmm. I'm not very dark, but and my friend was, and we weren't allowed braids, and they said, well, because you'll stand out, and I thought, she's the only dark-skinned girl, I'm the only other non-white in the school, I think we stand out, but we're not allowed <laughs> to braid our hair, just like, what? <laughs> But yeah. no, we had to adhere to that back in. Back, back yeah, in back. But it's I'm really. I'm. I'm just really. I'm proud. My my grandfather was. Um, he was a rebel in World War Two. He was in the underground, um, and my. I have his chin, um, and more obviously than that. My mum has always been a rebel. Uh, she still can't behave. She's eighty one, and um, I'm glad to have inherited. Um, a bit of that the rebellion from, uh, right. yeah, from the family. And I suppose that is, uh, and, and I know, you know, oh, I don't want to trigger people because um, I know, and I get it, there's a lot of emotion around all this. So when people are saying, and, and quite often, you know, Jewish are saying that, you know, things didn't happen when we look back throughout history, and it is very common for people to say, 
you know, what, you know, why didn't they step in? You know, well, why didn't they stop it? Yes. And then when you hear the whole, how, how it ha didn't happen overnight. And when you hear the story, you know, I'm not saying this is what I'm saying is the, the process that it's people true. went through. There are similarities. I'm not, please, listeners, I'm not, I'm not, um, saying anything other than the way things are controlled and way it can change people's perceptions it's mm. done little by little incrementally um, and it's very topical I've had a, a discussion just this morning with um, someone on my Facebook page because I, I posted an article about the similarities between um, the Second World War um, and and today and it does it triggers a lot of people um, and a lot of people are just like how dare you it's uh, you know how dare you say that there's anything similar and you know my mum grew up in the she was a war child she was born in 1940 and she has experienced a bayonet from a Nazi in her belly she has been sent to be shot off a damn wall because my grandfather was in the underground. So we, it's not that I am at all separate from this issue. In fact, my mum being my mum, these were, these were my bedtime stories. <laughs> I learned about the war firsthand. And my mum is the first person to say that the, there is so much similarity between then and now because it didn't start with, you know the the cattle carts and the, the the gas chambers. That's not where it started. It started years before. It started in World War One, uh, before World War One. This is you know they worked for thirty years to to get to that point, and we need to be able to recognise those early stages and just not allow it to happen again. Yeah, because it, it's not about the it it, it is about the control and the losing you know what it is definitely I know we're going off on a tangent now <laughs> the fear of I told you we'll just go with it um <laughs> the fear of it it is the the fear that your children aren't going to have the freedoms that that we mm -hmm. had I suppose that's the bottom yeah. line whatever yeah. which whatever way we don't know what their what their plans are and um, we're not sparking conspiracy theories here or anything like that this is we're not okay. going off that on a tangent, we're just saying that it is that there is this concern of yeah, what next? What 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 um, rights yeah. are we going to lose next? And it is a little bit concerning because of the fear. So bringing it back to the power of one and the knowing that people, there is no need for them to have that fear because that is damaging them to mm. actually flip it around and empower people. Mm. Um, how would you, how would you share with say listeners that haven't even heard of anything that, that we're talking about here and how to, you know, trust themselves mm. that the power that is, that is within them. Yes. Look, it's, it's a, it's a process. Um, but I think, Many of us, if we just take time and, you know, we can, I always start, uh, my, my biggest thing is drop into your breath. Once you just start to listen to your breath um, and, and really have that quiet time and you really listen to, this is the thing that's keeping you alive. You can go without food for days. You can go without sleep for days. You can go without water for days, but you can't go without your breath for more than a few minutes. And if you just take time to quietly sit and listen to your breath and then deepen your breath, and there's there's loads of um, pranayama techniques that, that people can learn about, but a really beautiful one is breathing in for a count of four, holding for four, exhaling for four, staying empty for four. And this targets the parasympathetic nervous system, and that's what our fight that that's our fight, flight, freeze um, system. And if we can just take time to be still, take time to listen, uh, take time away from our kind of busy lives, just breathe, just be, learn a little bit about meditation, take a yoga class, and and 
um, try new things. Don't don't close yourself up to anything. Um, if you're interested, you know, I have a lot of people that come to me for crystal healing. They they don't actually want to say that that's what they're here for. You know, they'll say, oh, I'm going for yoga. Whereas actually they're really interested in the crystals. Um, and it's like, you know, don't be afraid to try whatever it is that you want to do to, to, to discover that light, to rediscover that light in you. You know, namaste is a beautiful, beautiful word. Um, and the idea is that the, I bow to you and the light in me sees the light in you. And it's, it really, when we think about it, we all carry this beautiful light in us. This beautiful light is constantly flamed by our, you know, and um, these embers are fanned by our breath keeping us alive so I would say to your listeners um, take a breath work class go to a retreat um, do some meditation uh, try crystals try tai chi try um, qigong do do whatever it is that you want to to take some time to just get to know yourself better because it's these beautiful ancient um, modalities that allow us that give us that the tools to just rediscover ourselves and it is i i still you know find it so fascinating the fact that it's it's almost stripping away rather than every, when everyone's looking for you know the next thing to either consume or to, and actually what you know any, every coach that i interview on this show, show really is actually saying Take it away, take it, let's go back to basics. It's yeah. so interesting that, like you say, it's <clears throat> the breath. I mean, you everyone's looking for the next thing. The next, no, let's go back to the basics of the one thing that we need that most people, I'm saying most people, most people that are not into the more woo-woo stuff, into the rat race, their breath, they, they're never for a moment. Never for yeah. a moment stop to think about their breath. And yeah. the, these people sometimes going into meditation might be a step too far because to to, to yeah. quieten their mind, they find it's so difficult because they're so used to so much going on. So just focusing on that breath, that one thing, and it ev always the, the, the solution is actually in the nothingness almost yeah isn't it Absolutely. i mean even from sort of my teaching I'm, I'm all about fasting and i find it fascinating that it's the same thing whether it's we're talking about the mind and clearing the mind and the calming so through either the breath and even the way the body heals itself is let's stop eating stop consuming yeah. this we we've we've come into this world of just constant consumption of food, drink, thoughts, everything. And actually what you're saying here is strip it back to the nothingness and just focus on, ah, the breath. And it isn't just a thing that we say. It, there's massive, it's absolutely massive, massive, that one thing to focus on the breath. And the interesting thing is when we can all say, do what makes you feel good, you and me know that they're going to feel good when they do that one simple thing that doesn't cost a penny. <laughs> Yet. Yet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we can monetize anything. Like <laughs> it doesn't cost anything to breathe properly. Focus on, on, on the breath. And, it, and it's, um, it really is. It's just, I, I just find this amazing where people are just always looking for this cure for this that and the other whether it's in a tablet in a drink in a bit and actually yes the body can heal itself being put in to its natural and allow it and, and trusting your innate power yeah your, your knowledge it's um it's just and I, I just find it amazing so many people don't realize the the magic within breath and that's what i try and tell my clients my students is that if you just think about what's happening and if you 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 um you know take a, a, a 
course or, or watch a video on a, on, on a scientist or a biologist explaining how the breath works and how it comes in through the nose and it goes into the lungs and how it then moves into the, the blood um, and, the, and it goes all through the all through the body and it nourishes the brain. I mean, all of these things are happening. These magical, phenomenal things are happening in the space of one breath. We're inhaling nutrients and we're exhaling toxins. We're recycling this, you know, this body. We're healing this body in one breath. So much is happening. And I try to explain that magic to to my clients to my students and once we realize how magic it is how beautiful it is we want to do it better and a lot of us just don't breathe right you know we hunch over we're at the computer our lungs are all squished up what we need to do is open up open up our lungs our hearts and um, just breathe better and it 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 helps us with our moods. It helps us with our digestion. You know, so many of the things that we in society are dealing with today, which is anxiety, depression, um, IBS symptoms, people do not realize that so much of this is just because we're not breathing properly. We're not allowing that energy to flow through us in a, in a healthy way. There's lots of blockages. So much we can do with our brain. It is. It's. 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 You know, I don't like this saying because it's it's derogatory. Keep it simple, stupid. It should just be keep it simple. <laughs> yeah. I don't like, I don't like the final bit. Just keep it simple. It's yeah. Breath, water, energy. I mean, like I love the I. You know, with the crystals. Um. Again. You know, if people were just to think about it, even from a logical aspect. You know, we know that when we're feeling down, we're not happy. Oh, we are. We know We know innately that we are vibrating at a lower frequency. Yeah. Yeah. Everything we want is in a higher frequency. And so we can be like that. <laughs> yeah. And some of us can probably be like that within a minute, myself, right? I can be, I can, I can go up and down. Mm -hmm. I can be all, all mm -hmm. over the place with my own energies. Um, yet a crystal is is holding that energy, whatever frequency that crystal is. So it, even if people were just to think of this in a logical setting without having a real understanding of crystals, just to, that specific crystals around it, it's going to help us raise our vibration to whatever that frequency, because... The crystal can't go up and down <laughs> and change its mood. It's holding. It's a it's a con constant frequency, mm, which yeah. is all going to help us yeah. in a way. But everything it's everything is a lot simpler, I think, than we do like to complicate things, don't we? And it's um it's our I guess our, yeah our feelings of of not being in control and then that makes us want to investigate so much i mean what i see in my work with you know with the crystals as i said a lot of people are really interested but they're not sure and it's a little bit you know too woo woo um but then they experience it and they are sold so I don't know, I can't say what they're experiencing. I just know from my own experiences and how I've been helped and how I've been healed um, by by working with my crystals. I can't say what they're experiencing, but I can say what I see. And I see people lying down and being a little bit unsure and I see them coming up and it's just like, you know, when the sun rises and you feel that warmth on your face that's what happens when these people come out of their crystal experience with me there's just a warmth and their the expression on their face is different and they are peaceful you know and it's it's a beautiful thing and I think um you know nature mother Gaia um has given us so many tools breath is one of them crystals is another nature in her abundance you know is 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 there for us to use for our
betterment of ourselves and for society and for our communities. And I just, yeah, I, I, I just wonder at, at it all. And I wish people would be more open-minded to the woo-woo because usually when they experience it for themselves, they're changed. Experience. And I think that is, you know, I just said it's when people, like you say, just do what makes you feel good. Yeah. And so then if you're if you're interested in that side of thing, get in touch with it because yes, it's the um the proof is in the pudding, isn't it? You yeah. know, if you really do not feel better than when you walked in, then go back to your business yeah. and yeah. find something that does yeah. raise your vibration. But yeah, it is all in the um people not you know are dismissing it before they've even tried it, I suppose. That's yeah. that's the thing. Whereas, yeah, you will know. And I, and I do think, or oh, I mean, well, how do you feel? Do you think that within the last two years, I think people's innate knowing that there is more to this, I okay. think it's coming through because mainly, I think because they've, for the first time possibly ever, well, of course it is, it's the first time ever actually in human history that everybody has been stopped Mm-hmm. And whereas a lot of people are caught up in this rat race, they haven't had time to think of anything in this in this realm. So mm-hmm. for everybody to be forced into no work, they've ah oh, they've had to have that quiet. Yeah. Yeah. They've had to go within, yeah. whether they wanted to or not. <laughs> yeah. And, have you have you seen a change? Have you seen real a real change with your own clients? I think it's I think it's not even a change. It's an explosion. I've seen it, I've seen it. It's huge. Um, if I go back to my um, childhood, growing up in South Africa, my mom was a single mom. She was one of the first single mothers in my uh, school. And um, when she became a yoga teacher, it was was a big deal. Um, And I remember at school, uh, you know, one of my friends, God bless her, I love her to death, still today, but she said, you know, aren't you worried that you're going to go to hell because your mom's a yoga teacher? Um, And, you know, I could laugh it off because my mom had had grown up in a very um, Dutch conservative, Dutch reformed church. So, you know, and all the stories around that. I know how judgmental people can be. So it it really it didn't affect me growing up, and I've been very lucky in my life to not really be affected by bullying or insults. And in the last two years, especially, I've had so many good friends, teachers, mentors call me stupid, selfish for for my you know for my beliefs. Um, but the explosion of of spiritual awakening and awareness is 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 massive. It's and it's beautiful. And I think, um, although there's been it's been a really awful, terrible time for so many. And I'm never going to underplay um, that people have been uh, sick, that people have died. I'm not going to say there's not been a virus. I'm not going to say any of that. I've been called stupid and selfish for for many reasons. Um, but the awareness of 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 our our power is growing because somebody's trying to take it away. And I think wow. this is actually ironically causing this mass uprising. I mean, if you look at what's happening in Canada and now all over the world with the convoys, um, you can agree with them or not, but people are standing up, whether they're vaccinated or not, people are standing up for themselves, but they're also standing up for one another. And there is just this amazing, peaceful, beautiful vibe people are giving out free food and there's just like this abundance of love and beauty and peace and and I just think it's exploding and I I've had moments over the last two years where I've been like oh my gosh I've got to go and grow my own vegetables because the world's coming to an end you know (laughs) Uh, we've I think a lot of us have had you know moments like that and now I'm at a place where I'm just seeing so much positivity and yeah it's I wouldn't say I'm just noticing it a bit it looks like an experience to me yeah 
Oh, oh, I totally think it. I mean, I'm I'm so glad, uh, and, and I'm going to hold my hand up to it at the beginning. You know, I was I was petrified when it first started, and it was actually my own children that came to me and said, Mum, you've always told us not to watch the news. And I had it on like 24 seven. And it was amazing. And, and I never watched, no, I've never watched the news before. And it was my own daughters actually coming to me and reminding me of my own, you know, what my own teachings were prior to that. And I was like, oh. And the moment I turned it off, the moment it went away. And and then since then, last Christmas, the t- the main TV here in, in the front room stopped working. And I thought, well, I'm not going to replace it. Yeah. So we, <laughs> we, I mean, we're not, we can have music. We can have, I, I've got a, a projector onto this wall. So we can watch, net, you know, we can watch things we choose to watch. The yeah. difference in not having... Like, it, even somebody brought a TV round, like, thought I was, you know, what? Oh, how awful. You haven't got to tell you. When I don't want one. It's in my daughter's bedroom. She hasn't even plugged it in yet. We're not interested in having a TV. It has helped me. I mean, you can't miss it, can you? You'll see everything on Facebook. But just not having this narrative, this brain, it is, and now oh, I'm out of it. It is. is. You realise, you think, well, I don't want to be brainwashed anymore. Yeah. And I and I would agree. I think it's isn't it funny that we're then, you know, it is so true that we avoid pain more than going for what we want. So it's almost like it's taken to the realization that if we don't think now like things could get very painful so it's almost that's what seems to from from, from, that's that's my perception of it has brought everybody right okay they've got to the stage where enough now and like you say it's so peaceful i haven't seen any problems um it looks all amazing all the different societies coming in to help and cook food and um, yes, it is a wonderful, wonderful thing to start with things. Beautiful. I mean, mainstream media, unfortunately, is losing its um, its hold on a lot of people because we are in this age of, of information and we can live stream. Um, so, I mean, I have family in America who still think CNN is a religion. You know, Rachel <laughs> Meadows is God. And, um, and I, I understand why... That is, you know, but when we are in the age of information that we're in today, you can see live streams, you can, you can see, you know, from the people's perspective, Perspective. it's not going via a news channel who's being sponsored by Pfizer, you know, you're actually seeing firsthand what's happening. There's no denying that what's happening in in Canada, which is now happening in Holland and in the UK this coming weekend and um, all over the world, there's no denying that these are good people. You know, we the, the governments want to brand them as terrorists and anti-vaxxers and <laughs> white supremacists. I've also even been called that. Um, you know, it's, it's absolutely clear as day that these are just good people that are fighting for their freedoms, for your freedoms, for my children's freedoms, because they can, they've woken up to the fact that their freedoms are being taken away slowly, 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 and not even so slowly in the last two years. It's, it's phenomenal that a year ago I would not have been allowed to go into a pub I just wouldn't wouldn't be able to go into a pub or go to a, a, a f- any function because you know I refuse to have the the app on my phone. I don't have anything to do with any of that. I, my life was carried on very much um, as it, as it was pre twenty nineteen. Like you, I had I had about a month where I was like, oh, what's Ooh, going on here? It's scary. <laughs> yeah, like where's this virus? It's everywhere. Um, but that, you know, it very quickly, because I think I have that trust that you were talking about earlier, that, that I have an, a, an innate trust 
in 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 nature in the cosmos in you know god or, or whatever it is that you want to call it him her me um the, the trust was there so the, the fear didn't really take hold um and i think that's that's a big problem is that a lot of people have grown up so damaged so insecure we've been made to feel insecure because an insecure person is easy to manipulate and yeah. that you know it's really really as simple as that you can't you can't manipulate the rebels you can't you can't and that's why at school it's the the rebels or the bad kids you know <laughs> but actually they're the ones that are going to stand up and fight for you and i i, rem- I remember reading a beautiful tweet I, I wish i could remember who it was by but he said i'm fully jabbed i'm fully vaccinated and i've had my boosters but if there is one group of people that i would want to have fighting for me it's the so called anti vaxxers you know because after all the two years of constant propaganda through the television through the radios they've still not you know buckled those are the guys i want fighting for me and that's that's you know that's how this is all kind of exploding is that the rebels can you know make the rest strong give and and we're stronger in numbers aren't we you know it's always meant to be and so do you, i mean do you think it is that these people that are actually more aware of their own power do you think that's that sort of 100% and then it's it's just um it's spreading you know just like a virus light and love can spread too and i think yes. that's what's happening so you know i can give other people some courage not to put a mask on and go into tesco's if they have no symptoms and they're feeling fine and they're completely healthy i can do that by not wearing a mask and by smiling as much as i can um i'm spreading my virus but my virus yeah. is courage and love and friendliness and when people look down at me and you know you're selfish why aren't you wearing a mask it's like you know i'm really sorry that you think i'm selfish but um i just believe in my immune system i love my immune system i believe in you and i believe in your immune system and i i really don't need to wear a mask you know <laughs> <laughs> it is the way you do it. I have to say, I haven't had much negativity because I just wherever I'll go in with a beaming smile. Yes. And no yes. one. If I'm going to go in a little bit more like that, then maybe I would get some of that. You know, people ask asking me, but I, I, I don't think I'll give them a chance. I just <laughs> waltz in, go yeah, yeah. with this smile away, and it, I think people yeah. can't. They don't know what to oh, say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then just believing in yourself—it makes a huge difference. Huge difference. So, again, it's all going back to this whole thing of um, learning to trust your innate. You know, we've all got it. It's not that um, it's not that you're special, Pixie, or I'm. Spe- no, everybody is. Is we're all we're all the same. It's just the fact that we trust our own innate being our, our inner knowledge even though yes i'm human and i i got distracted at the beginning so that's that's because i had it on 24 i sort of got away from my own innate knowledge and the moment i turned it off i was back to my innate knowledge it's just so mm-hmm. amazing that 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 seems to have been what's happened over the years somehow we just on on mass become totally distracted yeah. through education through tv films everything to not listen because yeah we've had that we're listening to that 24/7 rather than mm-hmm. going back to what you said very early on about the turn it off and just for once focus just on your own breathing because could you imagine trusting them to do the breathing for you? Yeah. How would that work out? Right? How would that work out? Just think about that for a moment, listeners. And I'm so glad it's not myself, my conscious self, doing the breathing because I would have forgotten hours ago. I'd be dead. So <laughs> thank goodness this inner working, this inner power 
is yeah. doing the breathing for me where, yeah. where I am distracted. And then the power of when you actually join with your innate knowing and even be conscious with your breath, ah, isn't that where the power is then? It's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, it's, I don't know if you've ever done any, um, any diving but it's that beautiful feeling of you're in the ocean and you can't hear really anything I mean well you can you can hear a lot of things but the main thing that you can hear is just your breath and there's something just magical I mean being underwater is magical in itself but just that sound of your breath is so it's so comforting and it's so nurturing and it's just it's a beautiful beautiful magical Thing. and so mm. that and that is where these i suppose like if they were come to you for crystal healing or yoga you know you are there's no way i i challenge anybody I, okay so there's a challenge <laughs> someone proved me wrong that <laughs> to go and actually experience to say that you're going to walk away not feeling better than when you mm. came in yes. there's a challenge <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and I love that challenge. I love because that. it's impossible, isn't it? I just find that impossible because, yeah, nobody has got nobody's got a faulty one. I suppose that's mm. the message, is it? No mm. one's got a faulty one because, thank goodness, it wasn't made by the powers that be. It was, <laughs> it was made differently. So everyone has the same one. Interestingly yeah. enough, so yeah. trust it. So. Yeah, but it's, it's, it, the, the, the weird thing is with all of this is it's all the stuff that comes for free. When we stop consuming everything and just focus on your breath. Yeah. I mean, and that's, um, that's what I say to a lot of my clients. And it's, it's um, you know, I, I, I've always been kind of terrible salesperson. But I say to them, you, you don't need me. You don't need a mat, you don't need incense, you don't need candles, you don't need statues, you don't need anything, you don't need crystal. In order to heal yourself, all you need is you. You don't need anything else. It is, and I would 100% agree. However, the caveat for that would be having all those extra things will enhance the... I don't know, oh, even down to the feeling of community and it's the it's the bells and whistles on the end of it. Yeah. Yes, you can do it by yourselves, but yeah. what more of a wonderful play. I mean, I know you shared with me um when we spoke before of where you're at because you, you do you not run retreats from where you're where you're actually living and yeah, we're, we're in a beautiful going. environment, right? Yeah. We're, we're, we've just moved to a, a just a magical um, property in Shropshire and we are hoping to have our first day retreat um, on the 20th of March. Um, so, yes, um, we, we do hope to, to share our space that we have. Um, we've, we've come here, you know, for our family, of course, for our children, um, for our cat and for our guinea pigs and now we have some Keep. Um, but we want this place to be a place of healing, not only for us, but for for, for as many people as we can touch. Um, so yes, we are hoping to have our first um, day retreat um, on the 20th of March. It'll be, you know, meditation, yoga, some good food from, uh, from Bloom and Blender. Um, and um, yeah, a good friend of mine is going to be doing Qigong as well. So there's, there's going to be a lot going on. But, yeah, we're still in the, still in the early, early stages. But that's so that's just early. taking it to a whole other level. And, yes, we can, we can all, if you would really t learn to trust your own um, inner workings, as it were, yes, but how much nicer to maybe leave your own environment it's always it's always healthy isn't it to get sometimes to just take yourself away from your everyday environment into a beautiful um place with alongside all the things that are going on and the good food and the yoga and the crystal healing to experience uh, okay so there's a challenge for you for anybody to walk away from that and not feel better 
I would say that's just this just ain't happening. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so because that's no, uh, but it's just impossible. You just can't you can't can't not do it. Um, so yeah, thank you so much. I know we we did go off on a tangent. I said we would. Um, Pixie, mm -hmm. but um, for the listeners out there who, I mean, for everybody else, wherever you're seeing this, you'll have, I'll have all of uh, the ways to get in touch with Pixie underneath. But just to the listeners, how would they get in touch with you? Um, so I've got a website. Um, it's www.baudelaisholistics.com. Um, and yeah, uh, info at baudelaisholistics.com. Uh, I have a Facebook page. Um, Bloom and Blender is our is the food side of our business, so um, you can get hold of me there. So, um, yeah, wonderful. So it's you're going to be doing retreats. You do yoga. You do crystal healing. Anything else that we've missed? Um, wellness coaching. Uh, so I'm a qualified life coach. Um, yeah. So that's that's kind of me, I think. So if anybody has been feeling a little bit off these last couple of years, or even before, <laughs> and it's not just, it's, it's yeah. funny, isn't it? We've got this, there is this sort of block of, you know, and people, when you remember, even our own memories of things, you yeah. have to stop. We've got this, uh, it's like the last two years didn't happen. You think, oh yeah, I did that last year. And then you think, no, I didn't. No, I couldn't have done anything for two years. So actually, yeah. that was three years ago. Our timeline yeah. is completely screwed Yeah, because yeah. Of what's happened, isn't it? Because yeah. Uh, yeah, the normality of life was prior to, to, to 2019. Yeah. So our memory of it is just a little bit, um, it's, it's gone a little bit wacko. But hopefully, we're at the end of it, right? Yeah. How do you feel? Do you feel with this sort of a wave of awakening from so many people, do you feel that, I mean, I know I've been saying it's coming to an end. I've been saying that for the last two years, but I do really feel now that we're, we're close. There's, there's a change. There's change in the air and the overall um the, the overall frequency that's all the, the as you know uh, a year ago a year and a half ago people were frightened um, confused uh, and and seems to just as we're coming out of um, 2021 moving into this year suddenly something's happened I mean, I don't know. I'm sure there's something far more nefarious behind the government U-turn. Um, <laughs> I'm not too sure what that's all about. But there, there has been a very sudden change in energy, change in the atmosphere. It's, it's, it's. You can. It's tangible. You can. You yeah. can almost feel it. Yeah, you can almost. Feel, yeah, you can feel it. It's almost like you can touch it. I, I, I notice it, and I don't even have to tell it. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Are we allowed out? I don't even know. I've been out anyway. I don't... <laughs> Whether we're told to or not, I don't know. I don't listen. Um, I never listen to the rules anyway. Well, I just you were a bit of a rebel. Is this a bit of a rebellious radio show, this one? Um, <laughs> so don't come in and have a tell me off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Once a rebel, yeah. always a rebel. Um, yeah. As long as we do no harm, you know. That's well, and that's... And that's ultimately it. it, you know. You, you, uh, there's rebellion, and then there's anarchism, isn't there? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. possibly a rebel, but I'm not trying to hurt anyone. No, there's no, no harm done. No harm done. If you don't want to hug me, I won't hug you. But otherwise, I'm going to get you. <laughs> <laughs> I hug you. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's it. You know, um, so uh, thank you so much for your time today, Pixie. It's been a, it's been a lovely conversation and it's love. Uh, and, and I love doing these because everybody, we're all on the same page. Um, and, and the more people can hear about this, I think the, be the, the better it's, um, I think people are realizing that maybe there's there is more power within them and look and i'm not saying you know before everybody panics and you know the importance of going to a doctor I, i'm not saying mm. uh, none of us are saying 
um, do not go to a doctor. The, 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 the way I see it is if there's something, you know, if I'm in a car, mate, car crash, take me to a hospital. You know, they're so amazing at fixing things. And if it's urgent, it's like emergency. Yes, doctors, emergency. Sometimes there's things you haven't got enough time to go the holistic route because it needs to be dealt with now. And I get that. And that is wonderful. And I'm very grateful for that. All we're trying to say is a lot of things, you get it in, in the early stages, you wouldn't need to get to there. So we're really? not negating no. Western all in its right place. We're just saying that maybe there's another way if we get it early enough and, and, and focus on, on, on the self. And so I just wanted to put that out there. We're not anti Western not medicine um, or anything. No. It is about yeah. timing. Oh. And holistic, you know, Western medicine is part of the holistic experience. Um, I had this same conversation with someone yesterday. If I break my leg, I can't fix it with tea and homeopathy. You know, that's not going to. But I might not have broken my leg if I'd looked after my bone. Uh, so you know it's it's, 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 it's every, let's work together rather than against instead of competition absolutely. collaboration that's my final thought so thank you for your time listeners um thank you for listening welcome to the coffee with karen podcast a weekly chat show discussing everything from holistic health to current affairs from a mental, physical, and spiritual perspective. Get your weekly cup of positivity with a sprinkling of woo-woo.